The wedding industry is very saturated. There are so many photographers, florists, makeup artists. And when it comes to videographers, I think one of the ways I've been able to separate myself from the pack are my turnaround times. It is always a goal to send my clients their wedding film while they're on their honeymoon. I know some people have the opinion of, well, you know, if you're charging thousands of dollars, you shouldn't have the product back in a couple of days, but I've always thought, you know, why not? If you're a wedding photographer or videographer, I encourage you to keep track of your progress. From the second that a couple emails you, to booking you, setting up a meeting, engagement session, shooting the wedding, editing the wedding, I feel like not enough of us know how long that process is. And that's when everyone gets stressed and then you just feel like you're falling behind. From meeting a client to sending them their final video can be anywhere between a 20 to 30 hour job for me. And my prices are around 3,500, which means I'm able to make roughly $150 per hour shooting and editing. And I'm happy about that. I know companies that charge $6,000 for video and even more for photography. But if it takes you four months to deliver the product, you probably aren't making much more than minimum wage. And to me, this job isn't worth the anxiety and wedding day stress for $20 an hour. All those weeks and months after a wedding will eventually weigh on you. See, when I'm finished shooting a wedding, I don't consider the day to be done. I also factor in dumping the footage onto my computer, backing it up, and even calling the video that night while all the footage is fresh in my head. I'm telling you that waking up the next day after shooting a wedding and having all the footage sorted, organized, called, and backed up is just, it's an amazing feeling. All right, so you have your folder, and then um, I create an audio folder, and then a footage folder. Just kind of makes it easy. And then um, you're gonna launch Premiere, and then import all your footage. As you can see by my project window there, I like to be really organized, so I have a raw footage sequence, speeches sequence, wedding trailer, wedding film, then all the audio goes in that folder, footage, music, nests, and text. I know some people like to edit in this window, and they'll set like in and out points, and then from there, they, you know, they might drag that footage onto their timeline. I've tried that way before and I just find I'm personally slow at it. So I just sort everything chronologically and I bring it all into the timeline. And keep in mind, like this is basically what I do after a wedding shoot. Like I'll get home sometimes 11, 12, even 1 a.m. I'm still kind of wired. So I have peace of mind backing up all the footage. Sometimes I'll just be scrolling through, like I'll remember clips, right? Oh yeah, I'm looking for that smile. Um, I'll put it up there, delete the rest, you know, with champagne. Look, I'm just looking for reactions, just smiles, hair and makeup stuff, just scrolling through. I don't actually watch all the footage. Like that would be so time consuming watching all the footage. It's good to get establishing shots, of the house where they're getting ready, just so you can cut in between the guys and the girls, give your viewers some context. I'm basically just shooting six to eight second clips all day long. Uh, unless it's a speech or something at the ceremony, I don't really hold the shot for that long at all. As soon as I kind of get the shot, I just stop recording. And then I know most of the parts that I actually want are at the end of the clip. I can go through the whole wedding in about 45 minutes, sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more, just depends how much footage there is obviously. But as you can see here, all the footage I shot um, that day was about two hours and 40 minutes, just shy, two hours and 39 minutes. And when I rough cut it, I got it down to like 25 minutes, even less, because there's gaps in it. So that's a, that's a substantial rough cut. So when I wake up the next morning, I only have 25 minutes worth of footage that I actually have to look through. As you can see, this footage is sort of in sections. And that's just basically chronological order of the day. I'll have you know all the, the bridesmaid stuff from the morning. Then I'll have a section of the guys, um, a section of the ceremony. Then I also like to sort of block off um, just the couple. And then of course the reception, all the dancing. What you want to do is also remove the speeches from the raw footage. And then yeah, I'll copy and paste those into the speeches sequence. So I'll bring in the uh, audio to highlight both the audio and the video right click, sync it up, boom, done, pretty easy. To sort of go over everything that I've done, I've shot the wedding, I've called the wedding that night, and then when I wake up the next day, I'll sort of pick my favorite shots. So as you can see here, I have all the footage rough cut, I'll bring in the music, and then these clips over here is all the audio and sound bites I'm gonna be using. And what I'll do is I'll arrange them in the order that they're gonna be in. So that's kind of how you create the story. This little section here, 
is the bride's father talking. So he's actually talking about when he saw her earlier that day. So then it's nice to just cut to that actual moment um, and then cut back to him talking. That's sort of how you create the story, right? That's how you kind of get flow in a video. You bring out the emotion. If it's just footage that's sort of just randomly put together, yeah, it'll still look good, but you just, I don't think you'll get that engagement. And this is all just still fairly rough, but it's just nice to sort of get the foundation. Like this is all the audio I'm gonna be using, and I can start bringing them in all around the uh, clips I'm gonna be using. And I'll arrange them in the actual order of the video. And then I find I'll just take a big break. Like I'll just probably do three to four hours in the morning, just sorting everything getting the foundation of the video ready. I love to be outside. I try to get all this work done by noon so that I can just enjoy the afternoon to myself. I find I can't sit at the computer for more than three or four hours without sort of getting antsy. And I know I need a break when I'm rendering stuff and then I have Safari open in the background and I got a couple of YouTube videos or, or I got the Lakers game on and whenever I'm rendering, I'm just sort of clicking back and forth and it's like, okay, yeah, you know what? Time for a break. Sometimes all I need is a change of scenery. It's not that I'm actually kind of getting bored of editing. It's that I'm just getting bored of being inside. And if I look out the window and it's a sunny day, I'm just like, I just want to be outside, but I have so much work to do. And the great part about being out here is the sun's on my face, I'm by the lake. There's no Wi-Fi, no distractions. You'd be surprised how much you can get done in an hour or two that's just totally uninterrupted. There's no Wi-Fi, no phone. And it's just a nice feeling when you get a lot done, especially, you know, it's two o'clock in the afternoon and you've got more than half the work already done. Then in the evening after dinner, I find I just get kind of another wave of inspiration. I'll probably pump out another three or four hours before I go to bed. It doesn't always happen that way. There's obviously other commitments going on in life. And sometimes I do back to back weddings. So um, that gets pushed back. But um, for the most part, I like to follow this system. So after I've done the rough cut and got all the speeches synced up, I'm going to start going through the clips again and basically choosing what I want to use for the intro. I like to kind of create these little one minute intros just to some nice music, maybe use some audio from their vows or a speech, and just choose like some of my favorite shots of the couple. Today is June the 24th, and for the rest of your lives, you too will look upon this day as your anniversary. You were separated by your living arrangements for many years while Jess lived in New York, but destiny brought you back together. And what has emerged after all those years is a creation of a bond. Real love is looking outward in the same direction together. Love makes burdens lighter because you divide them. It makes joys more intense because you share them. It makes you stronger so that you can reach out and become involved with life in ways that you dare not risk alone. Sort of start thinking of the story, like how are you gonna open it? What's the next shot you're gonna use? Make sure not every shot is a wide shot, not every shot is a tight shot. And then when I have the introduction, I'll basically just watch it a few times. I'll think, yeah, I don't know if that clip goes with that clip or maybe I got to change the music. Um, this is sort of when I'm like really starting to take the editing seriously. Maybe I'll try out different sound bites for the introduction because I really want the first minute or two to be, you know, pretty powerful. Another thing to keep in mind is your musical transitions. You know, if you're having a 10 minute video, you're probably going to be using two or three songs. So what I do for transitions is I like to have you know, some audio going on as well. So it's just not like a harsh song change. So as you can see here, I got really long fades on the music. And as soon as she's done talking, boom, like right into the verse. Grade 10, or what I like to call the year of the sweatpant, was a very tough time for me, <laughs> but also one of the years I cherished the most because that's the year that I found my best friend, a best friend for life. Be intentional about how you're cutting to the music. Um, if, if there's a part that kind of quiets down or the verse or a bridge, maybe bring in some more talking and kind of ramp it back up. Um, you know, if someone's clapping or cheering or making a joke, maybe use that in a song that's sort of a bit more lighthearted. And, uh, and then when they're done talking, just ramp it back up like into the beat, like boom. And it just like, it all just comes together and it's, it's, it's pretty cool. 
All you have to do is just find the dream that you want and you'll get it. If there's a couple that I know can do that, it's you. So congratulations once again uh, to the new Mr. and Mrs. Dimitrik. Here's a little tip I'll give you for when it comes to the speeches and the clips you're going to use in the final highlight video. I set up a camera on a tripod on the podium and I just leave that set up for the entire speech. But then as I'm listening, if there's certain parts that I think, oh wow, that's a great story, I want to use that for the highlight video, I'll start shooting that on my zoom lens and get a nice tighter shot. That's the part of the speech that I'm going to use in the highlight video. So that means if someone talked for 20 minutes, 50 minutes long, I don't have to re-listen to that whole speech to know which part I'm going to use in the video. I'm going to have this 30 second clip that's a different shot. I'll sync that up to the speech and then I'll just pull that um, and bring it into the wedding film. Here I had um, the officiant say, you know, now I'm going to introduce so and so and you may kiss the bride. And that's why I did another song change. This one's a bit more upbeat, you know, everyone's clapping, they're kissing. Just find the appropriate time when you should change the song. Kind of changes the mood of the video. Huge crossfade of the audio. Really love that, that little dip in the aisle. That's great. I now pronounce they are husband and wife. You may kiss. Cutting to some more footage of them, having fun. It's an upbeat song, so we're just like having some laughs. Hope for the best for your children. And I think finding that special someone to marry is um, it's a big accomplishment. And as you can see here, look at the audio difference there. He's just super hot at the end, just yelling into the mic. Intelligent, she's got drive, she's artistic. I can do a fade right there and then boom. Now they're walking in, fast song. Time has come. Start harmonizing my videos. Just fun, right? Take a look at this ending. I'm sort of extending the song, I'm fading in another song in the exact same key. Nice slow mo. I just love this shot of them. Look at that beautiful bokeh in the background. And then boom, throw the text on. And now that you're happy with all the clips in the order that they appear, then you can start your color grading process. A fast way to color grade is to copy and paste the color settings and apply it to every clip in the same lighting condition. So if it's indoors inside the hall, then just color grade one clip and then you can match them pretty easily. If it's an outside segment that you're working on, then you should also be able to copy and paste to all the clips. You may have to adjust the white balance here and there depending on if it's a cloudy day and the sun is going back and forth, but it should be pretty minimal. And then when you're done the final color grade and you just feel great about everything, you're gonna export the video. I just do the H.264, it's good for YouTube, decent high bit rate, 10 to 50 megabytes per second. I know everyone has their own system and way of doing things, but for me, I just wanted to share my process from start to finish. I find when I do it this way, I don't stress out, I don't fall behind on my work. Sometimes I'll do eight weddings in a month, 10 weddings in a month, and when I follow this process, I'm able to basically shoot. I'm on a Saturday, on a Sunday, 
and then at, have both those videos done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, take Thursday off, do it all again, Friday, Saturday. It's a lot, it's a grind, but um, what I love about the industry is I'm able to work hard for a few months and then take a few months off. If you shoot 10 weddings in a month at anywhere from $2,500 to $3,500, you can make like 25K in one month. I don't share that information to brag at all. I mean, January, February, March, I'm making $0. So it gets all spread out, but it's still, it's nice to be able to have an efficient system and then to be doing well financially. So that way you're not stressed come the months um, when you have no work. Keep track of all your hours, build confidence, and you're able to shoot two weddings on a weekend, three weddings on a weekend. The more videos you do, the more referrals and eyes on your product. For me, it's better to do 40 weddings at $2,500 than to do 20 weddings at 5,000. Yeah, you'll be working twice as much, making the same amount of money, but the more you work, the faster you'll get, the more confident you'll get. You'll be able to have twice as much advertising. I think the more you start charging, the fewer weddings you're gonna shoot. And I've witnessed firsthand a few industry friends have to look for part-time work because eventually they're only shooting five weddings a year. And even at $5,000, if you shoot five weddings a year, you're still making less than minimum wage. So in my opinion, find a price point that works for you. For me, when I started out, I was charging a lot less. I just wanted to get into the industry. I wanted to shoot as many weddings as I possibly could. That way I had a lot of eyes on my content, a lot of referrals. Now I'm at the point where I'm able to sort of take on a little bit less work and charge a bit more. But still, I love booking, you know, 40, 50 weddings a year. And um, when I have this system rolling, I'm not stressed at all. And um, I just hope that you learned something from this video and that you can become a faster, more efficient editor, take on more work and uh, grow your wedding film business. Thanks so much for watching. Again, I know it's a long video, but it'd mean a lot to me if you subscribe, like the video, any questions you have, please hit me up in the comments or uh, email me. Thanks so much guys.